Hello, welcome to Tech Nordic. Uh, the channel is about enabling you to get more out of our instruments, whatever Tektronix Kiss instrument. I'm here to support you. And the deal is that you can just ask for anything, and I will try if I have time to just do the video. This video is a request from university in Sweden, and they want to see, you know, how does math works so on MSO5 and MSO6 series, which is, to be honest, I mean, we launched it, you know, one and a half years ago, and every quarter there's an update. It's a very stable product, but the wish list that we have in the field is back this long. So there was questions about how do you interact with MATLAB. It's, it's asked for it. Let's hope that they will do it. What about, you know, uh, measurement on measurement? So you can add, for example, rise time mi minus fall time or whatever you want. It's on the wish list as well. Doing math on trends a little bit more, it's on the wish list. So these are the things I cannot cover today, but I will make sure that I will try to confuse you anyway. So let's start. So I, I, I just stopped this one. This is a spread spectrum clock. And one of the things we can do here is we can, this is what I will do. I will look at the, the fundamental frequency, how much it it's kind of uh, spreads around the spectrum, first thing. Then I will do some measurement. I will do FFT, max hold. I will do some kind of eye diagram and I will apply filters to see the effect of my eye and the jitter by applying the filters. And everything is done in math. So hopefully that's okay. So we'll start very basically. We add a new math and the new math should be an FFT of this one. So we do an FFT and of channel one and I call it real FFT. FFT, that's just a stupid name, call it live. Oh, alternative units, that's not good. <laughs> you should put it on label. Uh, live FFT, sorry for that. So it should be live FFT. Okay, we're good here. And you can see it's actually moving around a little bit. So one thing we would like to implement first thing is kind of a max hold with FFT. We add a new math. And you saw here when I run this, we have a scale out, a scale label, a position, you know, basic. But we're going to do it in advance. We're going to add this. So we're going to take... And, and you will see that there's different sources to do the math. You have the channels, math, ref, measurements, filters, and variables. And you have function and keypads and stuff like that. We're going to try to keep this a little bit simple. So we're going to use max as a function of math1, who is the, the live FFT. And we're going to apply this one. And we're going to call it max. Max old. When it, when it done it, we have the max hold, and we can move this around and put it up here. That's the first thing we did. Then we, we will add measurement. We'll do that in a bit, but I know that this is like a 100 megahertz signal. So I'm going to reduce the sample rate to something that actually makes sense. I'm going to use it manual here, and we're going to go down to like uh, 1.25 uh, gig. Secondly, I need to zoom in there to do some measurement around 100 megahertz to see how much it spreads. This is my job today. There's other way to do it, but to show the math fine. So you right click here and you configure view and you don't auto scale it. You kind of tell it from found it easy. 90 megahertz to let's say 100. Uh, we have these two, okay, th there we are. And one of the things you can see, it's hard for me to do any very good measurement because the number of points I have is low. So as a normal spectrum analyzer, I need to add resolution. Resolution equals time. So I go down here and I just add some more time to it. And every time I do the time, do the FFT is gonna, you know, take a time for do it the max hole, but at one point, I will not see that much difference. We keep this one. When I've done this, I can do the measurements. We can add cursors, and I can kind of right-click, move cursor A here. I can right-click and move cursor B. Like what we get the delta is 3.982 megahertz, which means that the fundamental frequency is going like 100, 4 megahertz, kind -ish. And we can verify that by adding a measurement, and the measurement then should be frequency, 
we add this frequency and we can see it's here and double click here and you have the statistics and you see that the max is 100 and the minimum is 90 it's around probably three point something it's good enough so when that's done i can kind of right click here again configure you we could go back again and look at this how it looks like and what you see is that the, you know this is a sinusoidal it should have some fundamental but what i'm trying to do now is you know kind of get rid of all this you can see that we have odd things in here as well so i'm going to uh, create a filter and a filter that's aimed to maybe over here i can move it move cursor a here here and around 100 and uh, 100 yeah something like that yeah 100 with 8 megahertz let's see so now i go in and, and do another math and i will apply a filter go into the advanced tab and edit and i will apply the filter and then the filters at around 180 low pass that's 300 now we need to go down what about this one 125 and this one is like 187 i think the 187 should be it's around here okay we, we did that and with that now we have it so to implement it you press it and you select the channel you end bracket auto scale here as well something wrong oh we need to do it so auto scale low pass channel one and bracket and that gives us down here uh, our filtered signal. So what we want to do now is we want to check this one, see the difference, and we just compare this one. We would expect this one and this one be very low. This is a 20 dB below, but that will be much more. We add a new one, and we do an FFT of math C. This is it. So we can you know, go down this one, and th this is farther down, and the rest is really, really down. So by doing this, and there's a way to do this, but at least I've, I've added a filter to my function. So now we're going to look at the sped spectrum clock. This is where <laughs> it's a little bit tricky. So we're going to add a few more things to this equation. So we go for the plot. And we're going to plot two things. We're going to plot an eye diagram. Oops. I'm going to remove that. We're going to plot an eye diagram of channel one. And I'm going to remove this one. In cumbersome things. So uh, we're going to add a, a plot of uh, eye diagram on my math channel. See if there's any difference. now we have two eye diagrams we have my fft which is showing the cutoff frequency and we have up here my max hold and i have it. everything is kind of integrated and we're using now four maths only but we can continue this if you so of course a spread spectrum clock will be kind of closed so one of the things i need to know is setting up the first one which is this one measurement two this one so i need to configure it this is a clock and we want to look at both edges and then we go to the clock recovery and here i can make it global which is there's a pll we need to add and we go for custom type 2 and i'm going to have my frequency you can see it's not perfect i'm going to set my frequency to around five minutes yeah enter okay that should be a little bit and I go to my measurement point number three. One. I will configure that one. Lock. Full edge. And here is it. So what I did now is I look at the spectrum, the channel one, and did an FFT of that. That's math. Then I did a max hold on this one to try to determine how it looks like on a max hold because it was very unstable signal. Then I looked at uh, applying a filter, and this is what I see in the filter. And these two here are the different results before and after implementing the filter with my clock recovery. So the last thing I would like to do now is just to see how, I, if I get rid of this, because you can see that this is kind of, 
there's a DC offset, there's an offset, and I think it has to do with the dot. So we go to the time interval here, and we do an histogram, a lot of data here, and you can see there is a pure sinusoidal thing on top of this one. When I look at the time in the, uh, for the math channel, I do the same thing, do it histogram, and it should now be one peak. In this case, our total jitter, what you call time interval error, is from it's like a hundred picoseconds, but in this case, it's much more. The good things about this math, if I stop this one, the good thing about the math and the way everything works is that if I do another filter, if I want to change my filter, I can go here and add a filter now, which has have a different, let's say, 0.25 when it's 300 megahertz, and I apply that one. I can just clear what I've done before, add a different low pass filter on my channel one, and end bracket and apply, and it will calculate immediately on screen the difference. And you can see from here by applying the wrong filter, it will cause you to get the sinusoidal back in the signal, and the signal looks almost the same. I hope you enjoyed this video for me to try to explain some of the math functions more hidden. But this is one way I think what people can see an unlimited use of filters. Please subscribe. This is what people say. Or give me a comment if you want another video. Thank you very much for staying tuned. See you for the next video, which will be on Tempest.